Hi there, Russ Douglas 222 again. Hope you're all well. This is the third of three of my uh, recent torch reviews for a uh, written magazine article. And this nondescript looking box, I'm not 100% sure if you bought this from mail order, whether it would arrive in some more bling packaging. But this box is thanks to Brynite, and I'll put the link down below to them. And also thanks to Anthony of Pontypool Pest Control. Check out his channel if you're not already uh, familiar with it. He dropped me a line a month or two ago and uh, said there was a chance to uh, review this torch if I fancied it. So I got in touch with Brynite. Thank you very much, Kitty and Lisa. Brynite's actually linked to Ode Pro, the second of the, the three torches I reviewed. But uh, this is one seriously impressive piece of kit. Slightly different to the previous torches I've reviewed. Before I get on to the footage from Stonehaven Harbour and my, some of my permissions and Rabbits Outdoors, let's show you some details. So from Brynite, this is the T28 Artemis hunting torch. And I've already, I've already assembled the torch with the mount. You get a free wristband. USB-A to USB-C charging cable, a set of instructions, and I'll put the link down below to photographs of the instructions in full. There's also a small uh, protective card from the battery contacts when you first use it. Three spare O-rings, which is pretty generous because there's only one in use at any one time on the torch. I've already got the two-piece fully adjustable mount on the torch. So this is the T28 Artemis torch night vision variant with the two piece adjustable mount fitted and with a battery. And that weighs 15.8 ounces or 447 grams. There's a few, a few ridges on the body, the alloy body of uh, T28, but there's no knurling as such. Some very low profile, gentle knurling at the rear and there's a little bit of knurling on the power adjuster at the back on the rear stat. So the T28 is unusual in that we've got a lever, W for white, IR850, IR940. So with the focusing lens fully screwed in, obviously you wouldn't do this if the torch was on. You can see the white pill, then the IR850 pill, and then the IR940 pill. There's a tiny amount of movement as you flick back and forth between the, th the three pills, but in use, I found that all three pills were uh, pretty well aligned. As soon as I received the torch, I fed my, some feedback back to Brynite because myself, as a, someone who hunts frequently at night so doing pest control, IR850 is the most common wavelength and the most efficient with night vision gear. IR940 is about 25% less efficient with most night vision gear, but is more covert, so you won't have a telltale red glow on the lens like you will with 850. But for a visible light option for a hunting torch, I wouldn't go with white. I, I would prefer that to be a red option because when you're out hunting, if you've got the, the torch attached to your rifle or to your scope, if it snags on your clothes, flicks across from IR to visible light, if that's white, that could seriously spook your prey. You'd obviously flick it straight back to IR, but if it was red, at least it wouldn't rob you of night vision and it hopefully shouldn't alert your prey. So I've already given that feedback to Brynate. In terms of white light, I always wear a head torch when I'm out hunting anyway. So that's my source of white light to find my way around, recover shot prey and such like. That was first impressions. Build quality is fantastic. It's a very, very nice, piece of kit. This particular one is marked sample not for sale so perhaps that's the reason for the nondescript box but it feels, feels like a, a really good quality piece of kit. Slightly unusually if I bring the USB-A to USB-C cable over if I unscrew the rear section there's one o-ring in use there and as you saw there are three spares in the box. Now this battery is fatter, longer, than a 18650 battery, you'll see it's a 21700, which is literally 21 millimeters diameter, 70 millimeters long. 
pens 21 700. Also, see what looks like a tiny hole in the pinhead. This battery charges by plugging the USB C directly into the top of the battery. What looks like a hole is a red LED that changes to blue once the battery is charged. Nice and clear. For comparison, you can see it's fatter and longer than 18650 batteries. 3400 milliamp hour or 3450 is about the most you're going to get from a 18650 battery. If they're advertised as anything more than 3500 milliamp hour, it's a bunch of porkies. This larger 21700 battery is 5000 milliamp hour. So probably about 35, 40% more than, than a 18650. So this should last a fair, fair old while. With it on white so you can see what I'm doing, a very subtle muted click when you press the tail cap. You hold it in for about two or three seconds and the T28 comes on and that's it. With the lens screwed fully in, if I screw it out, you can see the beam gets more focused and there's no wobble with that full screwed fully out there's no wobble in the lens which is good so what we also have here is a visible green led power indicator which i absolutely love i wish all ir torches had this and if i flare it flare this out slightly we have a tail cap power control so if i turn this up so clockwise rotation about three quarters of a turn of the tail cap it takes you from minimum power up to maximum power we'll come back down again and a single quick click switches off so we have variable power control and the rat tail remote switch includes as you can see plus minus and power all the function can be controlled for all three pills via either the tail switch or the rat tail so with the remote switch attached central button on and off and there's a definite click but it's not too loud and when it's on hold the, the minus button for several seconds to power down or the plus for several seconds to power up so it power up power down controls not too quick there's no LED power indicator on the rear or on the remote switch so only the fixed switch has the LED power indicator just something to be aware of but you have full functionality on the remote switch for on off and dimming for all three pills so regarding the mount so we have a standard four allen screw 30 millimeter scope clamp there's a 30 mil to 25 mil reducing collar you can see inside it it's a single slot picatinny clamp which is finger adjustable knurling and this separate unit again single bar picatinny clamp with a, a knurled finger adjustable clamp and we have a large wheel for adjusting in that direction and a slightly smaller wheel for adjusting the other way now if i hold this next to the microphone for a second you can hear faintly hear the clicking it feels tightly sprung so that's very positive there is a slight offset to it and 115 grams just for the adjustable part of the clamp whole lot all together 447 grams 15.8 ounces so about a pound so the adjustment is very positive i would say the slight extra weight of the adjustable mount and the clamp is a small price to pay for such nice adjustment both wheels are knurled and you've got a recoil arrestor bar here and another one in here i did find that if i hold it this angle so you can see 
as is standard with many scope clamps, there's a slight depth difference between the two sides of the bracket. And I swapped this over, so there's basically no play in it. There was a slight amount of play between the adjustment unit and the clamp when I first assembled it, but I swapped around this little bar and uh, tightened it up and it's all, it's all nice and snug now. Right, I'm just about to go and pop around the corner and try and get a few bunnies. I'm using my FX Dreamline Bottle Pup, my Pard 008 LRF, and this is the Brynite T28 torch. I've just mounted it on the left side of my Pard on the Picatinny accessory rail, and uh, everything's tightened up, but there is a little bit of a wobble, which Looks like it's within this part of the mount itself. But we'll see how it goes. So we've got a very well made IP66 weatherproof torch with three pills in one, white IR850, IR940 with a fully zoomable beam, full adjustment on off and dimmer at the rear and you can see the green LED power indicator at the rear, nice and discreet, perfect. This is a very nice piece of kit. There is also another version of the T28 available which has white, red and green pills. That would be good for those hunters who don't use night vision and just use day scopes for conventional lamping, especially with the rear power control uh, to dim things down as, so you don't spook your prey. This is almost perfect for us night vision users. All I would love to see is the white pill replaced with red. And there is one omission you might be able to see, or rather not see. There's no yellow warning label anywhere Underneath, for example, that's the perfect place for it to be for the presence of IR light because obviously you mustn't stare into IR beams. There should really be a warning sticker on here somewhere. So I was already impressed when I uh, examined the T28 Artemis with the night vision pills. I'll now include some footage from the harbour and from my permissions showing the range of the white pill and the infrared pills and showing this picking up eye shine and showing the difference in efficiency between the IR850 and the 940. I can't include any footage of the subtle difference between the red glow of the IR850 pill and the more covert, discreet, almost black IR940 pill because the digital camera will just show the IR light anyway. You would need a conventional film camera for that. To burn crystal clear, six meters. If I adjust the focus. 114 meters, 180 meters, cliff top 190. So this is the white light on full power, crystal clear on the white light, and of course I can focus it. So that's fully focused down, very clear. I forgot about the focusing. Step over this side of the tripod. 200 meters, 250. That's not bad. 300 and right out to 400 it's not fantastic at 400 meters but it's not bad with a naked eye not bad at all hold on to the night vision mode adjust the focus of course right so that's the t28 artemis focus narrowed down 70 meters 
on 850 nanometers IR, the central lever position. Uh, if I, if I, there was a little bit of wobble in the lens of a second there, but if I widen it out, then it gets a bit grainier, spreading the beam. Of course, I can't make the part of view wider angle, so I can't see how wide I'm spreading the beam to. Unless I split it across to ah, huh, to white light, and then I do see. So let's narrow it down. The part compensates for the whiteout. There's a litter. Alignment, white light, IR is not bad. So, 70 meters through the previous routine. 70 meters, 850 nanometers IR, which is obviously the more efficient wavelength. 70 meters, 90. Not bad at all. Narrowest beam. Let's get the focus a bit better. There we go. So look at the gorse on the headland, 200 meters. I think I would still see eye shine at 400 meters, but obviously not so clear the detail. It's not bad at all actually. Let's see if I can adjust the focus slightly. 850 nanometers IR, which is the most efficient wavelength for use for night vision devices. So now let's get back to Ben, block the tripod again. So T20 Artemis 940 nanometers IR, 70 meter bend, nice and crisp, tightly focused beam on full power. So, up to the cliff top, a bit of focus, 200 meters, 250, so 300, let's see if I can adjust the focus slightly. And 400 meters. I think I'll get eye shine at this distance still. Yeah. Quarter of a mile, I'm seeing details of rocks. I'm just about making out bushes. Nothing with a naked eye, of course. I'll switch it over to 850, see if it gets brighter. Yep, so that's the that's the difference in efficiency between 850 nanometers IR and 940. 940, 850, okay, at a quarter mile. But it's very good that seeing those details at a quarter mile. Back to the bin, focus, closer, so anti clockwise, there we go. So that's on 940, 850, brighter, pad has to adjust. Excellent, very impressed with this T28. Quite a bit of detail up there, 200 meters. That's excellent. I think Bruce will want to look at this. Looking at some fence posts. This is on the minimum. And I turn that up to maximum. And put the LRS on so you can see what we're aiming at. Apologies for the focus, no, there's rabbits there. 60 meters. 80. Hopefully the rabbits are going to stay there while I quickly flip the lever and pop the T28 into 850 nanometers IR mode. I'll have to pop the card 
There we go. So that's a minimum. Um, T20 on to maximum. So. Put a bit at 70 meters and 100 meters over there. I'm showing off all of those. And switch it across to 940 nanometers. Grain here, and I need to refocus slightly. That's better. And I want to widen it right out. The beam is too diffuse, so turn it up a bit, lazy tighty. Yeah, so fully tightened up. That's perfect for shooting. Perfect for picking up eye shine. This is on 940 still, let's put it back to 850 and refocus. So you can see out to 100 meters plus that the T28 is perfect for the eye shine. And I've got it to not split by the uh, 850 nanometers. So now I've put the rifle in the car and packed it away, there's more rabbits come out. But I'm getting a bit sore and tired, so I should resist the temptation to buy more bunnies. We'll see. The T28 Artemis from Brynite, fantastic torch, with visible light, white, 850nm IR and 9429nm IR. But as you can see, this is tightly focused, the 850nm IR is not washing out the pad and it's also pad is on eight times zoom minimum zoom the pad field of view more than up to uh, picking up all of the white thank you if you've sat through all the way to the end here i'll put some chapters in so hopefully people can find what they're looking for very impressed with the uh, brian brian t28 artemis aka the t28 to have a visible light source as well as 850 nanometers and 940 covert 940 in the same torch is pretty cool my feelings when i first received this were spot on i've given them strong advice to get rid of the white option and change it to a red pill if possible after filming the footage you've already seen i've been out twice redu reducing the bunnies numbers on the paddocks and at one point i caught the lever basically flipped it in the in darkness to white light fortunately i was behind a, rock, a wood pile at the time and it only illuminated my feet briefly the second time i was lining up on a rabbit about 50 meters away i reached for the torch to turn it on not knowing that my sleeve had caught the lever and it was on white rabbit gone off, off like linford christie so would definitely like to see a red pill instead of the white pill but otherwise brilliant and i do i have have had to remember a few times so that you can focus the beam that which really does improve the brightness out to at least fac uh, air rifle ranges and possibly you know rimfire ranges too oh and while editing i thought i, I explained that I, I couldn't really show you the difference between the ir wavelengths via this camera but uh I thought well let's see how how it does look so that's obviously white that is and i can see a reflection behind me on the cupboard door from the screen so i'm not going to look i'm going to veer that away from my face so that is ir 850 and this that's a lot more cover oh right there's almost nothing visible in the torch that's ir 940 so there is a difference even on a digital camera. Back onto 850, back onto white and off. I'm gonna do another video shortly on adjustable torch mounts. I've got several here to introduce to you. I'm, I'm gonna look into mounting my, my IR torch further forward away from my pad, which is my night vision scope, because whenever you go from visible light to 850 to 940, whenever you change light wavelength, you have to refocus slightly. Even, even with the increased standoff of the T28 adjustable mount, 
it can still be a bit of a fiddle to get your, your fingers in for the objective lens of the pad and adjust your focus. So I'm going to look into mounting the torch further forwards. Obviously don't want it to obstruct the line of sight from my scope, but I also need to be able to adjust focus, especially if I change wavelength. So thank you for watching and don't forget to keep an eye on the UK Night Vision Forum, link down below, where you'll see discussions on all the latest IR kit and thermal kit. Lots more coming soon. Oh, and I should be collecting a new rifle on loan in two days time, hopefully. So I'll be bringing you another rifle review shortly. And as soon as UK courier collections resume, I've got a rifle and a pistol coming on loan for review. So keep an eye on the channel. Thanks for watching. Take care. Enjoy your shooting.